10 things that you didn't know drones could do. It's a pretty incredible list. We hope you stick around. Hey everybody, David here from Aerial Influence. Thank you for stopping by. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, here's who we are. We work with drones for agriculture. We work with drones for search and rescue. We work with drones for construction, engineering, you name it. We have clients that work in that industry and that are finding new ways to use drones every single day. So today we're gonna to talk about 10 things that you had no idea that drones can do. This is a pretty cool list uh, because it goes away from just like, oh, drones can do agriculture. Well, it can be a lot more specific than that. Uh, and agricultural drones can do things outside of agriculture and drones that are typically used for search and rescue can be used for things outside of search and rescue. So we're gonna talk about some of those things right now. Let's start with number 10. Feeding fish, that's right, sounds kind of crazy, it wasn't something that we had thought about either until we got a phone call from Klobuk Farms in Iowa. They are one of the largest koi farms in the world, in the country especially. They've got thousands and thousands of fish on about 80 acres of fish farm. It's crazy, it's gigantic, uh, but what we were able to do was take one of our agricultural drones. Now, typically you would use this for spraying of crops or spreading seed, et cetera. Uh, but what we did is we took the hopper and put it on the DJI Agras MG1P, that's the older model. But we were able to fill the hopper with fish food, go through each one of those little ponds that contain all those koi fish, and we were able to feed them in record time. Usually they spend hours every day feeding all of these fish, and this is gonna cut their time down considerably. So feeding fish, that's one way of using a drone that you had never heard of. All right, let's move on to number nine, and it is security systems. That's right, it sounds a little weird, but you're gonna use a drone as part of your security system. In fact, Amazon is trying to do this right now. There's a little device that has a drone inside of it and a little docking station. If there's some sort of ruckus in the house, if somebody trips a sensor, the drone takes off by itself flies through the house, does a little a little check to see if there's anything crazy going on and they send you that information to your phone. So that's a pretty cool way to innovate with drones, but there are also companies out there doing it outdoors where you've got like a box in the backyard. If somebody trips a sensor, all of a sudden that drone goes up in the air, it shoots you the live video of what's happening. So if somebody's trying to break into your house, you're gonna know it before they get inside and you're gonna be able to call the police and take care of the situation before things get ugly. So security systems, that is another way that you hadn't thought of using a drone. Number eight is waste management. That's right. Well, how could a drone be used in waste management? Well, drones aren't only for the sky. Drones can also be used in the water. And what some people are using in different parts of the world, they're using drones that float on the water or actually can go underwater in some cases. They're using those drones as sort of Roombas. They go around and collect the garbage and they bring it to shore. It's just an easier way of getting rid of the garbage that is really impacting our oceans and the wildlife that is in those oceans. As the technology increases, you're gonna see bigger and bigger units, which can then collect more and more trash. All right, so number eight was waste management. And I bet you'd never heard of a drone being used for waste management. But what about number seven? Have you heard of this one? Internet access. That's right, drones are already being used around the world to provide internet access to remote areas that can't get it otherwise. These drones work with satellites to essentially send them that internet access, then the drone itself, as it goes over an area or as it hovers over an area, provides internet access. So they could log in just like their Wi-Fi, but they're logging into a drone to get that internet access. Uh, pretty cool, pretty revolutionary, and it's providing important internet access to people around the world. All right, next on the list is number six, cross-pollination. That's right, cross-pollination. And what, what are we talking about with cross-pollination? What are we cross-pollinating? Well, this was actually something that one of our clients brought to us. He bought one of these bigger drones that have a lot of thrust. So they have a lot of wash that comes down and can really move your crops. Well, when you're growing hybrid corn, you have one row that is male and you could have three or four rows that are female. So it's the male's job to essentially pollinate the female plants. Well, what happens if you don't have any wind? If it is just not very windy where you are, guess what? You're gonna lose a lot of money, you're gonna lose your crops. Well, with a drone, you can hover low above those crops, 
kick it up and cross pollinate them. So this is something we had never thought of a really, really cool way. And we're proud of it because one of our customers thought of it. So we think that's, that's really, really cool. All right, let's move on to number five. Disinfecting. All right. We live in this crazy age now where COVID has sort of changed everything. Uh, so you look at something like a drone and you go, all right, well, how could that help with disinfecting? Well, we've talked about the fact that we've got these giant spraying drones. The DJI Agress T30, it can cover 40 acres an hour, 40 acres an hour. So we're getting pretty serious uh, with these drones. And we bring this one up because we've had a little bit of experience in it. Last year, we were called by the Carolina Panthers to come down and show them with our big spraying drones how we could disinfect the stadium before or after games. Now, this was right at the peak of COVID. So the NFL was trying to figure out, are we gonna have a season this year or not? So this was one of the ways they were thinking. And honestly, we could do it. We could disinfect that entire stadium in a couple hours and we showed them how we could do it. The one thing they wanted is they want us to then take the drone into the corridors indoors. We weren't good with that. These are huge drones. And once you lose GPS signal, you're sort of screwed. So we didn't try it indoors. They decided not to go with our method of disinfecting, but we've had other clients show a lot of interest in this. And this is not something that's going away. I think we can see that we all thought it was going away and guess what, it's still around. Uh, so I do think this is a way that people are gonna be able to disinfect large areas very, very quickly. Think about playgrounds, think about sports stadiums, obviously. Anywhere that people congregate outdoors uh, and and touch the same object, like monkey bars. You got 10 kids touching the same monkey bars. Suddenly you got 10 kids that have COVID. If you can spray that park down before any of the kids show up or after the kids leave, you are increasing your chances of stopping the spread of COVID. Number four, sports coaching. All right, well, obviously drones, they go up in the air. It makes a lot of sense to use a drone to video record a practice, video record a game. You can get up in the air. You can see exactly what everybody is doing. And we started doing this ourselves recently just for fun. So my son, he's nine years old. He plays football. I offered it to the coaches. I said, hey, I can get the drone up during the games. It's going to be a better way for you to be able to coach the kids and figure out what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right. Well, the coach was all over it. Uh, and he actually was able to use a program called Huddle after the fact. So he took the video that I shot from the air and he is literally able to go in and like circle a player, give him a note, uh, tell him what he's doing wrong, tell him what he's doing right. It's a very, very cool way to teach kids. It's sort of the future. Like this was not something that I had when I played football. So very, very cool uh, that we're able to do this. And I think this is gonna be a trend that's gonna pick up. I can get the drone up in the air and it's totally quiet and nobody even knows I'm there most of the time, except the coach who now gets very disappointed when I'm not able to drone because of high winds or rain or whatever. All right, let's move on to number three. Number three is mapping. Now there's all sorts of mapping that drones can do. It can do 3D orthomosaic maps. You can do thermal maps. You can do multi-spectral maps. You can do all sorts of maps. Now the key is gonna be knowing how to read that information after the fact, especially with thermal, especially with multi-spectral, you're going to want to know what that information is telling you. It can tell you like, hey, there's a big red spot right there, but what does that red spot mean? These maps can be really, really high precision to the point where you can actually take accurate measurements measurements from these maps, the height, the width, uh, the length from one point to another point. It really is remarkable what you can do with these drones. Now, you can map with like a Phantom 4. You can map with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. It may not be as accurate as something like the DJI Phantom 4 RTK. Now, RTK, that's like GPS on steroids. So it is gonna give you that precision and that's gonna give you the ability to take accurate measurements. So mapping, a big deal for drones. That is one of the things that is really pushing this industry forward. Number two, wildlife conservation. Now we worked with the folks at the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources a couple of years ago. They were trying to track the mating habits of some rare ducks in their area and to track some other wildlife in the area as well. They're able to use thermal drones with their heat detection to be able to see where the birds actually are. They're using this around the world right now to, to track the mating habits of all sorts of animals, to track the migratory habits of all sorts of different animals like elephants, like tigers, all over the place. Africa, New Zealand, they're already doing this stuff. America is doing it as well. All right. Number one, personal transportation. 
Now, this list that we put together was in no certain order. I just wanted a top 10 list, essentially. But personal transportation via drone is something that is coming. It is coming in the very near future. There are already prototypes out there, and people like my business partner, Michael Ferguson, are getting very, very excited about the possibility of being able to ride in one of these drones. Literally, you're gonna get inside and ride in a drone. Now, I don't know exactly how this is gonna work. I'm assuming it's gonna be on some sort of automated route, but here's what I know. I do not wanna be the first person to hop into one of these drones. I'm very interested on where this is gonna take us in the future. I could see drones taking people to the airport. I could see drones dropping people left and right. Uber's even talked about potentially developing drones. So it's coming. Maybe 10 years from now, we're actually gonna call an Uber and it's gonna fly in and we're gonna hop in and it's gonna take us to where we're going. Crazy. All right, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Make sure you hit the like, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Who are we? We're Aerial Influence. We work with drones for professional purposes, for agriculture, for construction, for engineering, you name it, search and rescue even. People are out there saving lives uh, with drones. I didn't put it on the list because that's kind of an obvious one for us. But again, thank you guys so much for stopping by. We're gonna be back here with more and more videos. So I hope you'll join us again. All right, we'll see you next time.